Uh, hi, um, today I want to give you a short introduction uh, about Pandas, and uh, this is me. I work with a strategic data consultancy in Germany, so we advise startups and uh, middle-sized companies on how they uh, can move on with the data. Uh, I'm also an organizer and program chair uh, of the EuroPython and the uh, PyCon DE conference. So first things first, EuroPython is coming if you don't have a ticket yet. Here you go, we have some amazing stuff. But, and also PyCon DE call for proposals is also open. It will be in October in Karlsruhe. So, pandas. So now we can go Pandas. What is pandas, actually? And if you're here because you're looking into some cute animal talk, I have to very much disappoint you. I'm very sorry. Uh, pandas is um, a data science library. Uh, it's, uh, it's like the Swiss army knife for data analytics. Uh, it, it's very easy to work uh, with, to read in data, mangle your data. It's basically the idea behind it was you can basically have a lot of data in, your, in, in Python. And if you want to do statistical analysis before you had to really move to the R language or something else. So something was really miss missing in the Python ecosystem um, until like um, 2008, Wes McKinney came up, hey, let's do something about it. And he built this great um, uh, library, Pandas, um, which basically has a method for everything, as you will see. Um, it's now in the Python step. It's a very stable project. Uh, it's now maintained uh, within uh, NumFocus and, and the Anaconda stack. Uh, they, there are regular updates. Uh, uh, there are many contributors. Yes, it's a project you can build on. So it, it won't go away tomorrow. And just if it stayed the way it is, it would be also amazing. So the main features are actually like um, support for reading and data from like any data format, you just name it, whether it's uh, CSV, Excel, JSON, SQL queries. Um, you can use it for data cleansing. You can um, reshape and mangle your data. Um, you don't, read, don't need really any in-depth Python knowledge to use it. You can basically just like use it from learning it with like, um, like basic or uh, intermediate uh, Python um, skills. It's really, it, it works very well with the Jupyter Notebooks, uh, you know, like Python code and visualization in your browser. Um, and uh, it's, um, it's, it's very performant, it's fast, um, it's very optimized for, for uh, data analytics and you will see in a minute. So today I'm going to give you an introduction and a basic overview of the functionalities in Pandas. Um, all the code and examples uh, and the slides are also on GitHub, so it's totally okay now yeah, for this, if you want to. Um, yeah, so everything is online, the video will be online, you can go. And let me introduce you to um, the data set we're going to work with. This is our data set. It's a super simple data set, not we don't have any, you don't have any overhead thinking about a data set. It's just like a timestamp and a temperature float. That's it. That's the, all the data for this talk. And we will see what we can do with that. It's uh, um, from an open data set from Aarhus in Denmark. Um, and let's just like start working with it and let's get the data in. Um, it's quite simple. Um, we just import pandas, SPD, that's like a convention. Uh, you will see it everywhere online. Uh, it's, of course, not necessary, but everybody does it. And um, we just read everything in our data frame. I'll get to what a data frame is in a minute. Um, we just say PD, read CSV, pass in um, uh, the path, and set like headers none. And you see this is like the output. And this is also like a screenshot of a Jupyter Notebook if you haven't come uh, across it yet. So basically you can execute code um, in, in your browser and basically with the head function, which gives us the beginning of our data set, we can immediately get a printout and our idea what is in our data. So this is really handy for like iterative data work. It's not just like pushing and see some output somewhere else and open another file or something like that. You can have everything in front of you just on your screen. Um, the, um, so I just showed you like the convention import pandas SPD. Um, it's uh, 
how to read a CSV. It's, it's very flexible. Um, so, uh, for example, just like the read CSV has like 40 parameters you can pass in. I mean, there's a parameter for everything in Pandas, which is probably, if you're a beginner, a little bit overwhelming, but don't let yourself scare, scare, scare yourself away from it. But, for example, I totally stopped using the read CSV library. library. If I stumble across CSV, CSVs in my day life, um, I always use Pandas because it's much more like transparent and flexible if you if you stumble across like um, mal uh, malformed CSV files. Um, so you can um, get your data, preview, preview your data, head and tail, just like uh, in Linux. And you can put output to a file, Excel, to an SQL database. But for example, we can also just like read in data and transform it into a dictionary in uh, Python and just continue working with the data um, in your code. So what else? Um, visualization is built in as well. Uh, so you don't need to think really about an, another library for this. Uh, so you can just use import matplotlib and plot it, the stuff in line. And what we're doing here, we have our data frame, and we can access the rows of our data frame, like, just like with slicing. It's just like the same logic which is behind uh, slicing in Python with lists and stuff. So just like what we do here, take our data set, first 100 lines, and just plot it, and that's it. That's all it. That's all there is. Um, so it's really very easy to explore data um, and pandas. And I don't want to go too deep into the visualization stuff. This is just like some basic examples uh, you can do. You have bar charts. You just name it. Um, you can even like improve your um, uh, data plots if you want to. You can basically just like get the mathplotlib object and, for example, add a line. So, for example, I added a line here for like, I think the average is like 16 degrees Celsius. Let's see if I'm right later. So um, basically, and you're not only like matplotlib is, is, is well integrated and built in, but it's also uh, easy to, to uh, plug in other libraries like Bokeh or Seaborn, which are probably like from UI a little bit or from the style a little bit more modern uh, than the um, very scientific matplotlibs, but it's up to you. OK. Now, I told you there's like data frames. And we read everything in pandas into a data frame. So what is a data frame? The idea behind this comes uh, from the R world. R, the R language, just like the letter R, um, things in series like this. There's a, this is like our data. It's like a, just like nine, uh, nine data points. Um, and basically, a series of data with an index is a, is a series. So we have a series of data, but it's also indexed. That's very important to know. And what's a data frame? A data frame is just like multiple series together in one frame. And um, it's, 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 at the beginning, probably a little bit hard to understand because if we plot the data, it looks like a table. And if you have a database background, um, in the, the rational, rational database background, you probably think in tables. But basically, it's just like you have to think a little bit like 90 degrees um, turned, like because this is series. And the series basically are glued together by the index. So if we iterate, you can, of course, iterate over like a data series like this, like we use it, you can do in a table. Pandas has like methods built, built in for this. But it's a very, you can harness a lot of power if you start to think about like, OK, this is like a column. It's still called a column um, or, or in a series. That's like a synonym, it's the same. And work with this. And we'll come to that in a minute. So, um, so the. Data series is just like a one-dimensional labeled series, like data and an index. And the index is not just like numerical. It can be also labels. Um, yeah, you can just like put names on it. Um, and uh, the index is automatically created when you read in the data. Um, you can replace it um, as well. Um, the data type can be 
set while you import uh, your data, and you can also um, transform it to another data type. Um, we do questions later, I don't know if that's right. <laughs> okay. So, okay, let's get a little bit more into code and how we can work with our data. So let's just like create like a random series. Um, we just uh, get PD pandas series, just like put in some random values in here, um, and you see there's like an auto da data type, it's, there's an automatically created index, and when we just like plot it out, we always see, okay, this is the index, this is like the random data, and we also get a data type, uh, float64. And pandas, uh, why is pandas so efficient? Pandas is so very efficient because it uses NumPy. So within a series, we use typed data. So yeah, every, like we have all the NumPy. If you don't know NumPy, NumPy is a very powerful um, oh, li Python library. Which is uh, which has like comes more like from a mathematical background. It's 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 like for numerical operations, and we work with typed data in there. And of course, like if the data is typed, we have we can have more uh, efficiency. So um, so everything is um, basically um, some um, NumPy uh, integer float. Um, only like text is still an object in uh, Panda series. So. Okay, let's go on. Um, we can also like say, okay, let's create a series, and um, and we can also just like get um, some some other random functions. We can just say like, create a simple series uh, and set an index automatically. We can also just like say, okay, we want to have a float. We can be explicit about that. And you probably already guessed it. We can also say, okay, just like do something else. Set another index. For example, I just give a range to do like multiples of five as an index, and you see like we have some random data and another index. We can also like put just like alpha, any like text labels there. It doesn't really matter. So um, yeah. So what else? How can we access the data once we have them in our data frame? Um, we can access them as we would do like in a Python dictionary, for example. So if we ask for series A, as remember, A was a label, so we get the value in our series, which is what which has the label A. So this is 71. Um, we can also access it by its index, like or like position. Sorry, like uh, like the position, like the first A is the first, so we also get the same value. Um, we can also like pass in a list with multiple um, labels we want to see, and we get um, a new series back just with the uh, um, uh, labels which were actually like explicitly matched for. Of course, we can do the same in ranges. Like here, we can also just ask for like a position two and four. Like um, everything's of course zero indexed, and we can also just like pass in a lambda function. Uh, so actually, just give us back the series with like multiples of two. So we get B and D, and that's it. So you see, it's very flexible. You can be really creative to to pull through your data series to get data out. Um, and it's not only like the Pythonic style with the square brackets. Um, you can even also use a method. And this is sometimes stuff which is just like overwhelming if you're new to pandas. I heard that a lot, so because there's, there's not only one way to do stuff, there's multiple ways, because we also can use a method. Yeah, we can use a method, uh, the method is lock, so just like lock, search for an index label, and we can use iLock like for, for index positions, and just like get the data back, and for example, just like immediately plot what we get back here. So we do an iLock, give us like these two values, and we get this amazing line charts, with two values back, um, that's powerful. There's also, or there used to be IX. You might stumble um, across it in like code examples. Um, uh, IX is basically just like a, a lazy function. So if you don't find don't find anything in iLock, uh, in, in lock, it will look for iLock. And um, but um, just like that, you know, because with the most recent pandas version 2.0.2. Uh, uh, 
um, it was deprecated now. So don't use it. It's just like confusing because um, usually you know how your day, day series is labeled. So what else? Um, if we have a series and we want, often want to know what's in the data set, because you get some data set and you want to have a look at your data and you don't want to read like millions of rows, probably you're just happy to know a little subset. And um, so pandas also provides a sample function. So basically it just tells me, give, us, give me a sample of like two values from our huge data set with like five values here. Um, so basically, if you have a huge data set and you want to test code and, 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 and test stuff, uh, how it's uh, actually, it, well, it's processed correctly, so you can just like uh, save a lot of uh, development time, just like sample a subset, take like a thousand rows, you can see whether your code works or not, and then just like continue and don't wait for any input or output or cal complex calculations, probably. Um, you can also basically give your series names, yeah? So basically, we can just like say series.name and set some string there. And you see, once we have a printout, we see on name here, our series now has a name. Um, basically, this would be like um, the synonym to a column name in a table. And often, like uh, for in the pandas world, although we have the like, data series um, and data frames, uh, still very often it's referred to as rows and columns. So um, don't. Uh, Worry about it. So, so you know the very basics how pandas basically works, how it's it's, it's set up, um, how you can slice data, access data, and let me tell you a little bit more about boolean indexing. So, what's boolean indexing? What do we actually do when we ask for these two labels? Um, a boolean index is just like a vector of zero and one values. So basically, imagine you have a series, and you, you basically query a series in pandas. You get returned like just like a true value array. And then you can ask the series, please give me back the values where you basically have, when you remember our data frames, um, just give me back the positions where we have a true value. That's it. That's all there is to know with Boolean indexing. So what's a data frame? A data frame is now a two-dimensional labeled data set. Um, it can contain data series, uh, it, but it can contain also 2D NumPy arrays. It can also contain data frames, other data frames. So it's just like a really huge and powerful container. And actually, it's very important to understand the index basically holds everything together. Um, and it's created, if not given, automatically. Um, so let, let's have a little bit, let's look a little bit more deeper into the index. As I already said, it's created automatically. Um, it can be set, it can be reset, and, uh, but there's a huge caveat. So for example, I have a, from my early days of database background, and if I think of an index, I say, yeah, an index, that's, that's unique values, but in pandas, an index may contain the same value multiple times. It's not unique by default. Of course, you can create an index, you can make it unique, but basically, you can. Um, you, you should just be aware of it. It might not be unique. Um, it can be also really handy if it's not unique. For example, if you have like um, just like an ongoing series of data, and for for example, like a sensor sends in a new temperature value every minute, you can just like take the whole set and ask pandas, just give me back the last value with this um, uh, label. So can we all be handy? But it um, might look a little bit confusing. So um, the index is not just like labels or just like a positional value. Uh, it can also have like timestamps, which we will see in a minute, which is a super cool feature if you work with time data. And, um, and it's not just like time data by seconds. It can also be like sales reports, like from monthly reports, daily reports, uh, just anything where you have to handle um, date time data. Um, and it can also be like time ranges, which is also, I think, quite amazing. Um, so,
let's show some more examples, like um, how we actually can work with calculations in series, um, how we can create a new series, how we can deal with null values, because null values might break our code sometimes, or, or you should be aware if there's null value. And um, it has also, of course, like um, uh, an impact on your statistics, whether you, how you want to treat your null values. So let's have a look. Um, so remember our data set, timestamp, and a float for temperature. Let's go back to that. So um, um, as you remember, I, when I imported it, there was just like 0 and 1. It was just like the, there were, was no header provided. And um, I think it, it's, it's, it's much better and much more readable if our data series actually have names, because we actually can ask for them by a very explicit name and not just like, OK, take uh, uh, the third one. Yeah? It's much better to ask for give me back the temperature. So I just like uh, renaming is really simple. You can just like passing uh, a list, uh, and so we have now uh, an index, which is still positional values, a timestamp, which is still a string, um, and the temperature, and we can just like plot the data. So we have that already. So what else can we do with that? Um, when I travel to the US, for example, I always have a lot of trouble with Fahrenheit because I don't have like a natural feeling for how hot is Fahrenheit. So I thought, OK, probably there's some rule of thumb. Um, so um, let's define a function for that. Um, so our actually, like, um, this is like the Celsius times 9 uh, divided by 5 plus 32. That's the official, like, that's the how you can basically uh, get uh, Celsius to Fahrenheit, and let's see whether we can make up some rule of thumb for like regular temper temperatures where we can see like okay, 99 Fahrenheit is probably 40 degrees, or was it like 30 degrees? I don't know. Let's see. Um, so it's very it's very simple to basically create a new series um, using our me the, the, the method we just defined because we can use the map function. So basically, this is just like, give us back the series with the, the, the temperatures, and then we just map the Fahrenheit method we just created there. Um, it's the same uh, idea as a map function in any other programming language. So take an array and apply this function to each and every value we find in this array. That's a map function. So um, we just map to Fahrenheit. We see, and basically, it doesn't look, does look, does look quite good. So let's see whether we can get a little more sense into that. Um, so basically, we just, because if we do something like that and just like ask for a temperature and ask a we get a new series back. It's not automatically added to a series. So let's do this. And basically, we can just like add a new series to our data frame, just like we add data to a dictionary. Just spec records, choose a nice name for uh, how we want to store the series in our data frame. Um, and that's basically it. We added a new column or a new series in our data frame, temperature F, which is basically doesn't look that bad. So, but, no. and the same we don't even, you don't need to do like, a, define like an extra method. We can also just like apply a lambda function. Yeah, it's just like the same. We're very flexible, and, but it's the same idea. So, let's see uh, how far we can get with our rule of thumb. So, let's create another data series and just like see for rule of thumb I want to have like something easy I can divide or multiply by so um, we have now like we can take these two series and since the series we can do calculations as if they were like vectors and we can just like divide them by each other because of course since we have the index they will have the same length and we can just like divide the series, and then each and every value is divided by each other, and we get a new as out. We save our output to our <coughs> rule of thumb, and that's, that looks quite good. Yeah, we could say like, oh yeah, let's settle for four. That's not too bad. And um, if you want to get a really like a statistical impression of how good our rule of thumb might be we can use the describe method, which is also built in. And we just like take the series and ask describe. And um, 
a little bit more background on in the statistical world. We, of course, everybody knows like what a count is, what a mean is. Um, we also have like a standard deviation, so how much, how dynamic is our data set? That's a statistical value. The minimum value in our rule of thumb is like it's 2.9, where we get a minimum, maximum, and we also get like uh, the quarters, uh, which is basically like the distribution. Um, it's basically, think about it, uh, how is the data distributed if you put it like in four buckets, and that's like uh, the 75%, so more than 2.4, uh, 4.2 is like the value you find like in the upper 75% in our data set. Um, but we also see we have a maximum here, and this is really off. It's like 17 like as a maximum, that's a four. We just settled for four, yeah? So let's look a little bit deeper and see, okay, um, we already saw like maximum 17. That's, I think it's a bad rule of thumb, also from what we just learned from our distribution. So uh, what if we think, okay, let's, let's be explicit and rename our data series, and we can also do that just like by the rename function. We can just pass in columns in a dictionary with the old name and a new name, and that's also like a big caveat. You have to put in place true there because Otherwise, it will just return a new data frame uh, or a data series to you. And if you want to store stuff in the data series or data frame you're currently working with, you have to put pass in place true in there. Uh, um, it's, uh, uh, yeah, that, that's a caveat for beginners, usually. So, um, of course, it's a bad rule. Let's get rid of it so we can just like drop it. Uh, and also, same logic applies. If we drop it, it returns basically a new data series of frames. If we don't, do explicitly instruct, do this operation in place. So we got rid of our rule of thumb, and probably I get an app for that now. So um, what we just learned is like how we can modify and, uh, data series and data frames. Um, and the important thumb, I, I cannot like, really uh, push this enough. Um, Think about in place, the in place, passing in in place through if you want to apply um, the changes to your, the data set you're working with. Of course, you can also just like take the result, store it to a new variable, or just like the same name. Um, it doesn't matter. Um, so, um, and we also learned we can remove data series from our data frames. And so, let's move on what we can do with data aggregation. So, I hope I'm not too fast, but I want to show you a lot of stuff. So, um, so let's do like a group by. Um, a lot of the thinking in pandas and uh, like the names is, is coming basically like from SQL uh, logic. Uh, so a group by in, in pandas is just like the same as you would do a group by in uh, SQL. Um, so basically we just say, okay, take all the values in our data frame, group them by temperature, and count. And what we get for each and every value we find in the temperature data series, we get a count how often timestamp and the temperature Fahrenheit appears in our data set. Um, of course, these values are all the same, uh, but this is just like for demonstration. So what else? Um, we can also like see um, what's like the deviation between temperature Fahrenheit and temperature Celsius. Um, we can also do this by like a simple calculation. We can just like add a new um, the data uh, series to our data frame and, um, and uh, just look, take one series and subtract the other series and we immediately can do subtract the mean from that series. So, um, and pass in new. So we see, okay, there's sometimes like really big differences. So, and of course, we can also just like take the result there and just immediately plot it. Okay, our time is running out a little, so we have four more minutes. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. And we so, have one question as so far, so okay. it's okay. All right, so let's see where we are. So, okay, uh, let's speed up a little bit. Of course, describe, I showed you already. Um, I really want to get to um, a little bit more 
on uh, this. This is, you can just look it up. OK, this is what you learned. You have describe group by for data aggregation. And just like let's a little bit a peek into null values, you can just ask, are there any null values in our temperature data series? With just like asking, is null? And we get like, oh, OK, we actually have four rows uh, there with, with NAN values. And um, so probably we should get rid of them. Or because, or if we are in a statistical world, probably we want to have them replaced by some uh, own logic or just like the average. So we have two values. One is missing. OK, play, let's connect them via the average. That's like a statistical method. Um, we don't have the time to go too deep into that. So my main message is there's like two, uh, for example, you can just like say, OK, drop an A. You can just like remove all null values from your data frame. Um, and the same applies, of course, only if you pass an in place, true. So um, that's basically like the end of it. So part one usually is a part two. This is a huge cliffhanger. Um, so. Uh, we learned about data series, I.O., data analysis, indexes. You have built-in visualization. And this is just like the tip of the iceberg of what's built in, in, uh, in Pandas. So just like to give you a small peek for another like a minute. Oh, I see. Thank you. Uh, thank you for another minute. Thank you. And of course, if you have questions and we don't can the answer, ask me later. I'm around all until Friday. So. Um, Let's take a little peek how we can, basically, for example, work with the index if we create from our timestamp data an index. So we can just use another built-in method to date time. And we have these nice timestamps. Be aware, this is, a little, of course, US date friendly, because McKinney is from the States. So you know, like US tends to have month first, then day as the only country in the whole wild world. So it's a little US date friendly. Um, but sometimes it's European friendly because the weekday start, Monday is zero and not Sunday. So um, there's sometimes not 100% US timestamp logic built in. Um, because of course, many, MapHandles has many maintainers from everywhere. So let's create a time series index. So we take the timestamps, make them into an index, and what we see, this was our timestamp we plotted. Because actually, like the timestamps were for multiple sensors and they were unordered. Once we have an index with a timestamp, basically, a timestamp is just like a number. Yeah? And also, like when we plot the data, we get it back in an ordered fashion. And actually, if you ask me, this is like very horrible, like oh, up, down, up, down, up, down. And this is more like, OK, yeah, this looks like temperatures over the range of a day. So this is like only a glance on the very much power on Pandas data views. Um, and you can do like amazing stuff like this. Also, just like ask for day values. Um, or for example, check whether the weather on weekends is better or worse than on weekdays. Um, but you can watch the slides. The code is online if you want to try it yourself. Um, if you have questions, um, just ask me. And um, yeah, that's the end. Perfect. OK. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. OK, good. Uh, we will have probably qu uh, quick question number one, which oh, was there. upvoted. So uh, what did they use with Pandas, or what would you recommend? Um, usually, I, I recommend always use PyCharm, except for Jupyter Notebooks. <laughs> um, okay. Basically, what I do is uh, I do a lot of coding. For example, like uh, implement methods and stuff I put probably in the library folder. I do that in, in PyCharm, because I think it's the it's the it's the best IDE around here. Um, um, but for like, if you do like expl to expl if you want to explore your data set, I do it in a browser with Jupyter Notebooks. And what I usually do manage everything via PyCharm and have PyCharm keeping stuff together. But go to the PyCharm console and start Jupyter Notebook, just like putting Jupyter Notebook and do the rest in the browser, um, because like Jupyter Notebooks, they're building in 
and 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 uh, in Python, but the the implementation is not really good. And I also talked to the guys at JetBrains, and I said, yeah, well, the Jupyter project is moving so fast, they just cannot keep up with it. <laughs> so uh, because usually they do a really good job. Um, yeah. So yeah. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much. Uh, and uh, I don't know, uh, Sandra, are you here already? Okay, Sandra is not here, the next speaker. So we will, we will have time for one more and then okay. we will thank you. So uh, what are the limitations of Pandas? Uh, can, what cannot be achieved with Pandas regarding data analytics? Um, who asked the question? Like, what, what's the limit for you? Is it like data size, uh, fast? Hand, please, uh, could you raise your hand? So I will give you the mic if you want to ask the question. Okay. Yeah. 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 Usually, what's like Pandas says. Pandas is really says it's really good up to one gigabyte of data, yeah? um, typed data, yeah? not just like Python objects uh, data. Um, it says very good. Uh, I also use it with bigger data, data sets, but it's I think with like if we have like a, a data set with like 10 gigabytes or so, it, it's it's that's really to get a little bit ineffective. Um, you can think about probably if, if you have a larger data set to do a, in a streaming fashion, just read in the data set and just like keep an aggregate and basically get to what you want to achieve uh, there. Um, also, Wes McKinney is. Uh, um, I think one of the core co contributors of um, Apache Arrow actually uh, um, addressing the issue a little bit deeper. And um, I'm sure they will connect everything. If it's not already, I have not time to look into Arrow yet. But yeah, but that's it. So like one gigabyte below this, up to one gigabyte of data, you don't really have to worry about it. Uh, and even if it's bigger, it's still OK. OK, excellent, brilliant. Thank okay. you for the answers, the questions. You can catch. Yeah. Thank you very much, Alexander. It was really good speech.